right, welcome to another Thursday. This is the Body Garage, the Art of Wellbeing. I'm your host, Dr. Chepsey. Now, today we are going to talk about how the environment and our human health interacts. And I know you might be asking that question that how is this even possible? But maybe after the discussion of today, we are going to be able to understand this and much more when we talk about, for example, the climate change and how it's affecting and how it's going to affect the human health. So stay around because this is something you don't want to miss. So I have my guest today, Karibu uh, Nisana. On, on, the, on, the, on my far left is uh, Ken Ogendo and Brown. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Karibu Nisana. Thank you. Um, so before we go into the discussion of the show today, it's good that our viewers get to know who you are, what you do, where can they find you? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'll start with, with Ken. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Chabsi. I should face which camera? <laughs> this one. So my name is Kenneth Ogendo, as you've said. I'm a public health specialist, and uh, I have several uh, hats. One that I wear is uh, um, right now supporting the Kenya Environmental Health and Public Health Practitioners Union, where I'm the chair. And also I run a social media platform called AfriaFit 360. And the whole idea is to empower the common monainchi on healthy living, socially, mentally, as well as uh, physically. And I'm also a scholar, I'm doing my PhD, looking at community health financing, because you want to strengthen the community health workers by using data and evidence to make decisions for them. Yeah, the rest I'm a family man, and uh, <laughs> uh, one wife. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Over there. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I almost said maybe we could specify a female wife, <laughs> but it's fine. Uh, um, yes, uh, Brian. Ken, Ken is a typical African man. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you guys, thank you Dr. Ari for yes. finding time to invite us here with my colleague and my brother. Mm -hmm. Ken Ogendo. Mm. My name is Abraham Ashira. I'm the Secretary General for Kenya and mm -hmm. Yes, uh, a trade union that is registered in this country that is advocating for the welfare and the rights of all public health officers and technicians mm -hmm. in this country and globally. Mm -hmm. And uh, by extension, I'm a public, public health officer. I practice in Nairobi mm -hmm. as a PHO. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm happy to be here to discuss matters through the environment and uh, health All right. as a backbone to this country. Mm. Thank you so much. Karibu. Asante. A pleasure. Um, mm. I'm also married with one wife with oh. three children. So, <laughs> so it's, important, it's important to declare. You know, nowadays you must declare where you, you are standing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Um, now, Let's, let's pick right there, because both of you have said uh, the background is public health. Yeah. Uh, you both uh, in the background, public health officers. You know, for, for us in the common place, when we hear public health, we are only thinking about maybe one or two things, Borafia. Mm. But maybe public health is a field that has a lot of things to offer. What, what are some of these things? Yes, thank you, Chabsi. First of all, I would like us to talk about public health, what is it? It is the science and art of prolonging life, promoting healthy behaviors, protecting the human being from diseases that are coming from being exposed to many pollutants and harmful substances in the environment. And we target the entire public the, through organizations, non-government organizations, government has put up public health policies, all geared towards protecting, promoting, and prolonging, prolonging life. We also are empowered to prosecute those who are breaking the public health laws. And we are also uh, very keen on enhancing behavior change at the household level. And that's where community health comes in strongly as a subset of, community, of, of public health. So that's what we are all about. Even in Oya Borafia, we are not really, it's, it's the term that we have been referred to for a long time. And let me talk to Kenyans through this camera that public health officers are not those people who 
go to just look at uh, market sanitation. There is a wide array of things that we do, from policy, articulation, development, all the way to preventing diseases at all levels, held in all policies, working with line ministries, looking at uh, issues of pollution, climate change, uh, water and sanitation. We are very broad. And uh, let us, let Kenyans desist from looking at public health as the guys who inspect meat. As a matter of fact, uh, Daktari, we have ceded that function 10 years ago <laughs> to the veterinary department. But in the event they are breaking public health laws in the abattoirs, uh, of course you have to crack the whip and make sure that you're protecting Kenya and let them have the right meat. But that's, that's a subset of what you do. Like uh, a, one over 100, we are f so much more. Here yeah, back to you, thank you. Mm. Anything to add? Uh, yeah, I'll say, you know, the history of public health from the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, Moses was a public health officer. If you look at the country, this country, Tom Boy was a public health officer. These are the people who devoted their lives in making sure that uh, human beings have long lives. Mm -hmm. And so that is what public health is. And we, 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 we are people who have been trained to protect lives. Mm -hmm. We are part, our peer our, and our role mandate is to, in, in, the, in the setting, the, the public setting, we decongest hospitals. Mm -hmm. We don't look at people when they are sick. Mm -hmm. Our work is, don't, we, we, we like those hospitals as much as possible to be empty so that the money that the government spends in terms of making sure that we, we use on other things, it can be spent on development and the economy. Mm -hmm. Doctor, you know very well that this country right now is suffering from uh, harsh economic times. Mm -hmm. And we would want, as much as we can, those monies that we, we are putting in place for people to be taken to hospitals, people should use those monies to do other very, very important things in the economic, in the, the economy wise, mm -hmm. social wise, and whatever. That's what, what public health is. And therefore we are saying, we are telling the government that we need to empower public health, uh, put public health where it belongs, and uh, we are the drivers, we are the public health officers. All right. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a lot that is happening in your field, yes, in yes. other words. Mm. All right, now you mentioned about the environment and yeah. all the related things. Let's mm. start with this one area, the mm. point of pollution. Mm. And then I think um, off camera I said there's a lot of different kinds of pollution. Mm. Air, land, Maybe we can talk about those things and how important or how do they eventually affect human health? Yeah, we can, we can start with... Oh, okay. <clears throat> Thank you for that question. So pollution is a great public health concern, not just for this country, but for the entire globe. And uh, pollution comes from the word <laughs> pollute. And we have harmful substances that, that are being released into the environment. And this can be either be released in the air, on land, or in the water. And we also have other subtle pollutants, like we also have noise pollution, which is very important. You, I'm sure you must have heard the other day, the governor in Nairobi uh, was very keen to ensure that our estates are free or devoid of noise. Because noise, if you have noise beyond 60 to 70 decibels of noise, then we are preparing you to hearing loss. In fact, war unto those who go kupiga shere and stay, stay sitting next to the speaker. If you do that for many days, many hours, you are subjected to hearing loss. So pollution is wide. And uh, we as public health officers, specialists, we are keen to make sure that we educate the public around pollution and also support them to reduce pollution. One of the most common pollutants we have is, uh, or type of pollution is indoor air pollution. And uh, you realize, for example, in Nairobi, uh, right now we have 150 slum settlements, going to 155. And uh, Nairobi slum settlements comprise only 5% of the total land mass in Nairobi. And these small settlements are taking 60 to 70% of the population. 
So you can imagine the 4 million people who sleep in Nairobi at night and the 5 million people who are gallivanting in Nairobi every day by day. At the end of the day, they are exposed to a lot of air pollution. One, in the traffic, because of the fossil fuels, uh, you know, the, the petrol stations, the traffic jam. And then when you go to sleep, and especially this 60, 70 percent population, in the, in the settlement areas, like uh, we have uh, Kibera, Korogosho, plus another 150 of them, which we don't even know by name. The settlements are not well built. They have not taken care of uh, public health requirements. How much, uh, uh, how much lighting do you need in a household? How, m how much uh, air should you have circulate in a household? The type of materials they are using to make, uh, to cook. And so we, we are exposing a lot of our people to air pollution. And we need to start appreciating that, for example, air pollution is killing 19,000 people a day in Kenya. 19,000? Per, per day in Kenya. Globally, air pollution is killing 1.3 million people annually. That means then we have to think about air pollution in a big way. And if we are having, you know, let me just break down, the 1.3 million people dying globally, it's like having 55 buses with 65 people capacity dying and crashing or moving to the Indian Ocean and dying every day globally. And that's just to paint the thick picture we have as a result of air pollution. Air pollution is exposing us to pneumonia exposing us to chronic pulmonary diseases. It is exposing us to more of diabetes and hypertension. There's a huge relationship between air pollution, indoor air pollution, and non-communicable diseases. It is also reducing uh, our capacity to breathe well and just have clean air and mental health. So we have to think differently and we have to invest differently if we are to save our population from uh, this kind of uh, do you th do you think it's worse in the uh, which which is the right word developing countries is it uh, worse in Kenya compared to let's say in the US in the UK uh, maybe uh, if I may be maybe echo something you know pollution uh, pollution is brought about by different factors for example mm -hmm. if you're talking about urbanization mm -hmm. and industrialization mm -hmm. you know in the in the era of industrialization that era we are having a lot of industries. Like, for example, if you look at Nairobi, for instance, mm -hmm. you go to industrial area, for example, we have had uh, emissions of uh, fumes and uh, all sorts of pollutants in the environment. Mm -hmm. So it's urbanization and industrialization has contributed uh, nearly to close to 80% of pollution that we're actually having in this country and also globally. Because mm -hmm. you go to a place where, by for, example, for, for instance, we're having industries mm -hmm. and other uh, the congested vehicles and what have you, mm -hmm. and the growth in the population, that's the way the chairman said, mm -hmm. You realize that even if you are to measure the level of uh, 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 pollution mm -hmm. using the sensors that we usually use, you realize it's very high. Mm -hmm. So we contribute in one way or another. You know, human activities contribute in one way or another mm -hmm. towards uh, this issue of pollution. pollution. Yeah. So it is important that we understand as industries that we are binded by law. Mm -hmm. We are not supposed to, we have laws, the Kyoto Protocol, we have the Stockholm Convention, yeah. we have the MCA Act. Mm -hmm. People decide to abuse the law. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, you know, like we have polluter sprays principle, for example, somebody decides to pollute, then he fails to pay. Mm -hmm. Or rather corruption has actually come in. So it is high time that the government cracked the whip. Mm -hmm. We as players in this environment sector, mm -hmm. with high time that we sensitize our people, you know, the environment we live in determines a lot. Yeah. And it's us either we make it or break it. Sure. Because it, it impacts us a lot. So it's us to sensitize the people, sensitize the, gov uh, the, the, the industrial players, mm -hmm. so that we, we, we limit what we emit okay. to the environment. So we, yeah. we are going to hold there and then we take a break. When you are back, we are going to look at a few, what is the way forward when it comes to maybe handling air pollution. Okay. Right? So stay around. You are watching TV 47.
The home of untold stories. Marty! It's fight night, and the WBF title is on the line. 10th June at Charterhall, Nairobi, Sarah Chien defends our national hope against Edith Soledad from Argentina. That begins 6 p.m. too late. You are watching TV 47, the home of untold stories. All right, welcome back. You're watching Body Garage, The Art of Wellbeing, and I'm your host, Dr. Chaps, and we're talking about the environment and human health. Mm -hmm. And right now we uh, continue the discussion about um, air pollution and other kinds of pollution and how they affect health. Mm -hmm. And you have had discussion already, but now what will be the way forward? Mm -hmm. If somebody asks, you know, what is the way forward to help me to get these different kinds of pollution? Maybe to bring you to book before we go to the way forward, mm -hmm. there's this an organization that did a research in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, I told you I work in Nairobi as a public health officer. It's called, that organization is called CIGENDA. CIGENDA, yes. CIGENDA stands for Center for Environmental Justice and Development. Mm -hmm. And it did a research at around a uh, dam site area in Dandora. Mm -hmm. And it established that uh, this, uh, we have a lot of contaminated eggs. Mm -hmm. The free range eggs that we consume uh, they actually contaminated the pol uh, persistent organic pollutants. Mm. They actually did a research and showed that. And that one should tell you why we should be careful on what we when we eat. Leave alone the eggs. Even the, you, when you walk, walk around in Nairobi, mm. you realize there are also cows walking around. We have a lot of cows eh, mm. walking around. You question even the milk mm -hmm. that we drink from those cows, even the meat. Mm -hmm. Those me the meat and the milk that we consume as Nairobians and other other area, yeah. you realize that the are contaminated with the POPs, mm -hmm. uh, that is the po persistent organic pollutants. Mm -hmm. So it's high time that we uh, we educated our people. Mm -hmm. It's high time that we developed stricter laws, mm -hmm. stricter measures to ensure that we. Be before you proceed, just in in brief, what yes. what does the persistent organic pollutants mean? Uh, persistent organic pollutants, uh, these are pollutants, these are things, uh, we call them they're like, they're like um, uh, elements mm -hmm. that usually when you consume, they're injurious to health. Mm -hmm. they're, actually, they're, they're actually pollutants. Examples are copper, lead, they're actually elements oh, yeah. that okay. when you consume it through food, through, they're actually found in food chain. Mm -hmm. For example, when you, for example, when, when it, birds, the birds when they move around, mm -hmm. the free range birds, mm -hmm. you know they use, they eat the, the plants, the greens. Huh? Yes. And these greens, assuming we ban plastics, when we ban plastics, it is this soil that uh, those pollutants, uh, they come through the, pla the, the, Into the plant, the, the plant. Then, then our birds uh, consume. We know that we, 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 we like carotene. Mm -hmm. We get egg, uh, carotene from eggs. Yeah. So when, we, when those birds consume those, uh, those uh, leaves and the greens, mm -hmm. Uh, they finally end up with the eggs and the um, meat. Mm -hmm. So we end up finally consuming them. Yes. So we need to be careful mm -hmm. what we do so that we measure the, those levels so that mm -hmm. we are able to contain those ones. All right. Yeah. All right. Please, I, please proceed. Uh, yeah. I can add that uh, those pollutants are not biodegradable. Yes. And hence the word persistent. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are consumed by those animals, he has mentioned, mm -hmm. and they get into the system and they hurt our health. Mm. You will also realize that uh, the other day, uh, we have celebrated the World Environmental Day, mm. and the focus has been on plastic pollution. Yes. Kenya banned plastics in the year 2017. Six years later, we are still grappling with the issues of plastics. It is high time the authorities stop looking at the small fish, and, but go for the big fish, the people who manufacture these plastics. Mm whether it is at the borders of Kenya and Uganda or Kenya, Tanzania, Kenya and uh, Ethiopia, wherever these plastics are coming from, we need to kill the snake by hitting the head and not the tail. So these 
plastics are a menace and globally uh, these days being celebrated to help us look at them is telling us that 80 percent of kenyans have adopted and there's a critical 20 percent that is remaining however i'm also uh, abhorring or rather uh, impressing upon NEMA to also work with all stakeholders and ensure that the producers have responsibility akin to what you have in the Kyoto Protocol, the political pay principle. Let also the producers be responsible. We have these water bottling companies. In Kenya, we have around 1,000 of them. And uh, research was done uh, sometimes uh, last year and it was declared that 93% of the farmers, I don't want to mention them by name, but all, you know, when you go to a water shelf and you're choosing water, you usually think, let me choose the most expensive or the most classic one. It may have cleaner water. But the reality is, 93% of the bottled water we have was seen to have plastics inside the water. So we are consuming a lot of dirt through the eggs, as mentioned, uh, the meat we, we go for, and it is high time we have health in all policies. Let the policemen also support us. If they see these uh, cows are going to take plastics, uh, let's not have cows near dump sites. Let's not have uh, free range chicken near dump sites, yeah, so forth and so on. Yeah. yeah. And then lastly, so air pollution, plastic pollution, those are just one. There's also another type of pollution, land pollution. Yes. And, uh, Back in the day, Jichopevu had a groundbreaking expose on lead pollution. And there was a battery company that was releasing this pollutant into the environment. And you remember they did a study and it showed that the, the community was getting hurt in many ways. Women could not get pregnant. It was causing miscarriages, and among others. The children's intellectual capabilities were reduced. And uh, the organ failure, you know, kidney, liver, and all these other problems that were happening just because of exposure to lead. Thank God there was a serious environmental activist who took the government to court. And the court ruled that the government pays $12 million, US dollars. It was a huge award globally. So we do not need to spend all this money. You can imagine what $12 million can do yeah. to an ecosystem. So we need to have systems that work to ensure that we are preventing Wanjiko from pollution, pollution of all kinds, whether air, whether water. Look at cholera right now. Uh, cholera is sprouting up 60 years. We celebrated our independence the other day. Then you're celebrating World Environmental Day four days after that. And we are still having people dying of cholera in this country. The sewerage system in this country was first constructed in the year 1960, 1961. Then upgraded uh, in around 1994. That's for Nairobi. Yeah, for Nairobi. And uh, <clears throat> you find Nairobi is the only county that has 50% coverage of the sewerage system. The other counties are below. 50%. Uh, in fact, 26 counties in this country, according to the Water Regulation Board statistics, they are saying that of the 26 counties that have sewage systems, only 215 urban centers have a sewer system, meaning all the other Kenyans are just depending on septic tanks. And hence, we have a lot of open defecation, which is being linked to cholera. And you can imagine, Dr. Chebsi, if we have not upgraded and updated our sewer system to the level that needs to be met at you know world health organization for example then we shall still continue to grapple with cholera 60 years after independence so we need to go back to the drawing board and invest in a sewerage system now if 26 counties have these pseudo systems that are being built 21 counties don't have proper sewerage systems the government needs to invest in storage system so that we can reduce cholera and other water wash water related diseases yeah, i can imagine if a sewer system was built in 1960s even the technology that is yes, yes, yes. was used mm -hmm. um, and everything about it is still 
yeah. that of the old times. Yeah, you're right. Yes. And so it cannot uh, serve, serve yeah. as uh, that capacity. effectively. Yeah. Also, there's population growth. People are giving birth. Yes. And uh, day in, day out, mm -hmm. you know. So we need to update and uh, actually improve the, improve mm -hmm. the system. All right. Mm. Wow. That's, that's quite an interesting uh, and discussion. And actually, for, furthermore, Dr. even the 50% sewerage system, uh, coverage you have in Nairobi. Half of that water is usually not treated. Half of Where half does of it go? Gets Where does it go? To, to Rwai. So we have a lot of sewage busts. It is operating beyond the seams because of what he has just mentioned, the population explosion. We have more people. What was built for Nairobi was to cater for one million people. I mentioned we have four million people sleeping in Nairobi. And still growing. And still growing. By 2050, our statistics are going to be hitting the roof. So we need to refocus and invest in public health infrastructure. And the problem with uh, many of us is that we want to handle, you know, you're a doctor, I will just mention this, for purposes of an example. <laughs> yeah, sure, no problem. When, when you see a malignancy or cancer or a tumor, you can see it. And hence you want to, you know, but through surgery, surgery removal, removal, because, removal, because yeah. you can see it even through imaging. But for us to have uh, imaging instruments to even look at particulate matter, the matter that is below 2.5 micrometers, that gets into your nostrils, into your heart and lodges into your lungs, causing cardiovascular diseases, causing uh, lung cancer and other diseases, then you need to invest in proper public health infrastructure. We don't have water sampling mechanisms. We don't have food sampling mechanisms, infrastructure to help this country move to that direction. Instead, our health system is investing in, in uh, MRI machines. Uh, you remember the medical equipment service program that was worth 38 billion. All went into getting the dialysis machines and, and we are not refusing. We are not having our people go to India. But even when those systems are put in place, so many people who are going to, uh, they were, we did not, rather, this is what I wanted to say, we did not have enough human resource to go and use those machines. So assuming half of that money was put in public health, intervention, prevention, we reduce money. You save money. Yeah, back to you. I can see the passion. I can feel the passion. Yeah, it is. It yes, is which, which is important. Mm -hmm. Now, what about climate change? You know, right now there's a lot of push. There was, uh, it was COP 20, 27, right? That happened in Egypt. The one that was uh, the conference on climate change. And, uh, you know, uh, also in Kenya events are happening. Almost every organization right now is trying to do something in relation to climate, climate change, climate action. Mm -hmm. But in terms of health and uh, coming from your field, the public health perspective as experts, what is the real implication of climate change on human health? Yes. So we are going to have the Conference of Parties, COP28, this year. And the presidents all over the world are planning, including our own president, who is very much invested in climate change. And we also have the minister who was put in there, if you look at the title of that ministry, it's uh, the Ministry of uh, Forestry, Climate Change, you know, and something else. At least we are seeing that the government is trying to come alive to the issues of climate change. Right now we have a huge funding gap with regards to climate change, uh, resilience and adaptation. Globally, this, there's a gap of close to 3.7 trillion that will help countries like Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, adapt to climate change issues. Remember, when you look at uh, our carbon footprint, the guys he mentioned, uh, China and the US, they're the wealthiest countries in this world and they're the biggest contributors to pollution. Pollution. Yeah. And hence, they're the ones contributing to these greenhouse gases that we have uh, in the globe. And Africa, you know, Congo is the richest country, yet the poorest, they say, because of what they have. But something important is, is, the, is the forest cover they have. The forest cover in Congo and the Mao complex we have in Kenya, among others in Africa, are the carbon sinks 
they absorb the carbon dioxide, hence maintaining the temperatures below 1.5. But you'll find some countries like China, there are some places where you can't even see the sun because of the smog that is uh, created after those pollutants meet the sun rays. So we we, we can We can hold right there, we take a break and then we'll just pick from where you've left about the carbon sink. Okay. All right, we're going to take a break. When we're back, we continue the same discussion. requires and must be must get fierce resistance as new leader Raila Odinga has threatened to call for countrywide mass protests a finance bill is passed says the bill is a disease that cannot be cured wabunge wetu wote wako sawa na katika hapa mlima ni mia kwa mia also tonight Deputy President Rigave Kashago maintains that Parliament will pass the finance bill. Wajumbe wote katika Kenya Kwanza wako nyuma ya rais kwa mambo ya finance bill. Kashago says all Kenya Kwanza MPs are in support of the bill. Plus, CIA Deputy Governor William O'Doul has been impeached by MCAs. Odol has been impeached over what MCA's term as gross misconduct. You are watching TV 47, the home of untold stories. Welcome to the Moikibaki Convention Center, the premier events venue. Our state-of-the-art facilities are designed to meet all your needs, from large-scale conferences to intimate meetings and everything in between. Located in the heart of Fika, the Moikibaki Convention Center offers stunning views of the city skyline and is easily accessible from all major transportation hubs. Our facility features ample parking, free Wi-Fi, advanced audiovisual equipment, and our technical team is always on hand to ensure your event runs smoothly and seamlessly. Don't take our word for it. Make Make your next event unforgettable at the Maikibaki Convention Center. Contact us today for bookings and reservations. Email multimedia at mku.ac.ke or call us on 0708-21204 or 0727-441733 or 0721-438-629 to learn more about our services and book your event. Hi there, my name is George Washiri Optiven and I'm very humbled to introduce to you to Rivu Gardens Phase 2, this property is adjacent to Konza Technopolis and only four minutes from the highway. This is a property whereby when you purchase it, you preserve your wealth, you build your wealth, you create your investment, create wealth for your generations. Don't miss this lifetime opportunity. Call this number right now, 0790-300-300. Optiven, inspiring possibilities. 23 years of impacting communities. I am so excited to have joined MKU. The flexibility in the payment of fees makes education very affordable. With over 165 fully accredited programs and the state-of-art learning facilities, you literally have the world in your hands in terms of career choice. The learning is not only uninterrupted, but also supported through ICT. And within no time, you are done with your studies. Join us and start your career journey. Intech is in progress. Mount Kenya University, unlocking infinite possibilities. Mount Kenya. You are watching TV 47, the home of untold stories.
All right, welcome back. You are watching The Bodyguard at the Art of Wellbeing. I'm your host, Dr. Chepsey, and we're talking about the interaction of the environment and human health. And we left right where you are talking about the carbon sink. Yes, please proceed from, from there. Yes, Dr. Chepsey. Mm -hmm. So I was saying that uh, we need to invest in the climate change mitigation measures mm -hmm. as well as adaptation strategies. Mm -hmm. One of them is uh, increasing our carbon sinks. When you talk about carbon sinks, these are the, the environmental resources that absorb the carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. Remember, climate change is caused by greenhouse gases mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that go into the, to, mm -hmm. that cover mm -hmm. uh, the planet, mm -hmm. Earth, mm -hmm. and then cause global warming. Yeah. And then these causes towing of the ice covers, the mountains, you can mm -hmm. look at Mount Kilimanjaro, look at Mount Kenya. But beyond that, mm -hmm. it, the, the forests are able to absorb the carbon dioxide. Yes. But now we are cutting trees. Mm -hmm. We are burning a lot of fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. We are producing a lot of carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. The oceans and the forests cannot meet our expectations mm -hmm. because we are fastly putting plastics in the Indian Ocean and other yeah. oceans. Mm -hmm. We are cutting trees for charcoal. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to have proper structures and proper policies, regulatory frameworks, mm -hmm. involving all the public health officers in the country, mm -hmm. educating people through community health workers on indoor air house pollution and mm -hmm. all these things, so that you can reduce the carbon dioxide that is being produced. Mm -hmm. Because we are still going to increase in terms of population. Yeah. So we have a lot of uh, contribution by the wealthy countries. Mm -hmm. And even us as a middle income country, at the lower tier though, mm -hmm. we are also aspiring to be wealthy. Mm -hmm. We want to have more manufacturing. Yeah. More manufacturing means more emissions and contributions to global health, yeah. I mean to global warming, warming yes. which leads to climate change. Mm -hmm. And the problem we have, and this is what we are trying to say. Mm. People need to understand the connection between climate change and health. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And one famous president, I don't mention his name, mm -hmm. cannot understand, yet he is from a very powerful country, <laughs> contributing to this menace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they are not tangible. And this is the challenge we face as public health specialists and officers. Yeah. We are trying to sell something about the soft matter, the mm -hmm. soft issues, the software, mm -hmm. not the hardware. Mm -hmm. You may not see the effects of climate change yeah. uh, physically, but you'll feel them. Now we have drought that you've never seen in this yeah. country for yeah. so many years. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of uh, hunger. Mm -hmm. And when there's a drought and hunger, there's no nutrition. We cannot fight diseases. You might immunize a child, but if there's no food at home, then how will that child survive? Mm -hmm. They will stand. Yes, Yes, our stunting rates have gone low, mm -hmm. but they can get lower if we address the issue mm -hmm. of climate change. Mm -hmm. Planting a tree is a public health intervention. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the environment. Mm -hmm. So we need to see the nexus between climate, mm -hmm. and then we also need to invest in it. Now the challenge with African governments, mm -hmm. they don't want to invest in all they cannot see. They want to put a hospital because that's where the governor will say, umeona ni mwekea barabara, ni meweka hospitali. Because those are physical, they are tangible. Yeah, yeah. But now we need to move to the next level and invest in these intangibles, mm -hmm. invest in public health, mm -hmm. in these structures that help us mm -hmm. reduce diseases. When you say invest in public, what are some of the practical things that we can actually point that we need to put this in place for public health, we need this for public health? Are we talking about research institutions? I will just give one simple example, mm -hmm. like uh, hand washing. Mm -hmm. Diarrhea has costed this economy 27 billion. Per year? Or? Yes, per year. 27 billion. All right. A lot of money. Mm -hmm. And here, you know, you have to cost uh, all the things that go into managing. Uh, the diseases, mm -hmm. diarrhea being one of them. Mm -hmm. And leave alone diarrhea, look at cancer. Mm -hmm. How many people are we losing mm -hmm. to cancer mm -hmm. annually? 40,000. Mm -hmm. Look at diabetes and hypertension. 3% of our population is said to be diabetic. Mm -hmm. We are not screening them. Yeah. We have uh, a big big opportunity in investing in the public health. Yeah. Because there we are able to save money. NHIF spends a lot of money on renal 
uh, dialysis, dialysis yeah. and referring people to India. Mm -hmm. But if we invest in screening, just a community health worker mm -hmm. coming with a glucometer mm -hmm. and a blood pressure machine and coming to educate you to stop using paraffin. Let's say to you uh, today mm -hmm. that when you look at the leadership of, uh, the, of the public health system, mm -hmm. it is medicalized. Yet we need to have more public health specialists. <coughs> what do you mean? Or having those what do you mean by <laughs> medicalized? <laughs> <laughs> we are getting into following. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> what do you mean when you say medicalized? I, 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 we do not have a problem with the medicalization <laughs> of uh, any of any nature. Yeah, yeah. And in any case, mm -hmm. we, uh, we we support a curative system whereby people, when they get sick, mm -hmm. actually you need to go to the hospital so that you you are treated and go home. Mm -hmm. But the point that is trying to raise is that we need to invest more in the software. Make sure that public health interventions are respected. Mm. You know, like for example, uh, I'll take, I'll give you a very simple example about, for example, we're talking about climate change, mm. planting a tree. And you said planting a tree is a public health intervention. Mm. When you have forest cover, you know, for the first, first time in the history, mm. and it's because of such a small thing like even planting a tree, uh, like uh, advising our people, like we don't need to use a stove in uh, whatever. You need to invest in uh, 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 cleaner energy solutions mm -hmm. so that people don't get hurt. So when you're talking about public health interventions, we mean investing in the idea in the, uh, 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 public health. For example, even the, the laws governing public health, mm -hmm. uh, public health act up to four. It is very clear mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, when. Uh, for example, there's a nuisance, there's a procedure prescribing law how to abate the nuisance. Mm. There, are, there are things that are supposed to be put in place. So we must ensure that we put budget, budgetary allocation in public health interventions mm -hmm. so that we cut down on the cost of the medicals and the medicines and uh, what have you, so that mm -hmm. we're able to look at the, it from that angle. Mm -hmm. So uh, medicalization of the health system, actually it should be a minister of health, a minister of health, not a minister of diseases. We are not born to, to nurse diseases. We are supposed to, supposed to be a ministry of health, mm -hmm. so that when you go to the minister of health, you feel you are healthier, <laughs> and not or not when you are sick. We don't yeah. we, we don't anticipate people to get sick. And actually, the essence of universal health coverage, if I may maybe take you back to universal health coverage, mm -hmm. was the real essence of universal it was about prevention mm. and promote, promoting what promoting health. health yeah. So when we put our money in, in UHC and we put our money in prevention and by extension public health, mm -hmm. you realize all these things will get money even to do other things in regard to economy and development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all that right. we avoid medicalizing health. All right. Yes. I hear you. And I hope our brothers, the doctors won't uh, throw stones on us. We will we'll hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, yeah. just a quick one and then we get into the politics. Mm -hmm. Let's review one thing. COVID-19 in Kenya, Yes. from the public health perspective, mm. did we handle it well? Yeah, we, we did. Actually, we flattened the curve. That one, we must take pride. Mm -hmm. I, that one, I can tell without blinking an eye. Mm. It is the effort of public health officers and technicians at the points of entry mm -hmm. that actually flattened the curve. We mm -hmm. did conduct tracing. Mm -hmm. we, we did conduct tracing. You know, conduct tracing has been proved as a way of cutting uh, of, of, of cutting uh, the, 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 the transmission cycle. Mm -hmm. So our, our officers, right from the disease surveillance coordinators from our sub-counties to the counties to wherever, mm -hmm. they did a fundamental job. Mm -hmm. And we cut, we, 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 we cut the, the transmission cycle. We managed to bring down the curve. And mm -hmm. that's why we're seeing our people actually very happy. Mm -hmm. And we went to the market as, well, as, well, as far as open barazas. Sensitizing people on the need of you know, washing hands mm. and even avoiding overcrowding mm. and making sure that they're actually very safe, putting on the masks mm -hmm. and all those things. Mm -hmm. So those are public health interventions. They're simple, but they're expensive if you, if you disobey them. Mm -hmm. they, like, like putting on a mask might look a simple thing, but when you disobey or rather you don't adhere to it, you, when you get the disease, then mm -hmm. it becomes it becomes also expensive to, right. to manage. What about from the policy perspective? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of preparedness and the related. Mm -hmm. So I want to echo what he has mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, the country tried. Mm -hmm. We did our best mm -hmm. to avoid. Mm -hmm. But now, when you come to look at COVID 19 from a policy perspective, mm -hmm. 
how are we prepared to handle a pandemic? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. You realize yeah. that as a country, we were caught flat footed. Mm -hmm. yeah. The testing of COVID-19 mm -hmm. was a nightmare mm -hmm. and it was very expensive. Yeah. It was a big business mm -hmm. for the farmer world. Mm -hmm. They were able to uh, try their best to produce uh, these vaccines in record yeah. time. Yeah. I look at it in two ways. One, in terms of preventing COVID-19, mm -hmm. It took so long for us to realize that it is about public health interventions as opposed to looking for a drug. Mm. And uh, again, when you look at the money that was invested in fighting COVID-19 for the first six months, mm -hmm. went into around $6 billion. Mm. And yet, the money was supposed to be invested in prevention. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the money that went to the persons who helped us, the public health officers and the mm. community health workers who yes. were doing home-based care. Mm -hmm. Remember, the hospitals were busting their seams. There yeah. was no capacity yes, to admit. Definitely. Mm. We should have embraced primary health care mm. at the beginning. Mm. We could have even planted the curve sooner. So, mm. But it took long for governments to just accept that community health workers <laughs> are the panacea <laughs> to abating COVID-19. Yeah, yeah. Yet, they were still the same panacea to abating Ebola, Ebola. Mm. in West Africa. Mm. Remember, Ebola flattened the Liberian economy mm -hmm. in West Africa. Yeah. People are going to seek help from uh, which doctors, <laughs> and then the doctors themselves are also dying. Yeah. So you, in fact, <laughs> Ebola wiped all which doctors yeah. in West Africa <laughs> because of lack of information. And yeah. we are saying a community health worker will empower the household mm -hmm. with this information mm -hmm. on hand washing, yeah. masking, Masky. and many others. Yeah. Hence, protecting us not only from COVID-19, but mm -hmm. also from Ebola. Mm -hmm. And other emerging health politics, mm -hmm. you find the kits were available out there, mm -hmm. but it took long to have them in Africa. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have this union. We want to participate in the local, mm -hmm. global politics, regional politics mm -hmm. of health. Mm -hmm. Not to do manda yeah. but using data to convince we government yeah. to give uh, public health interventions mm -hmm. the priority and the targets mm -hmm. it deserves. Yeah. All right. That's, that's, that's great. Now let's go to the new kid in town. <laughs> mm. The new kid in town. You mentioned that uh, it's Kenya Environmental Health and yeah, Public, Public Health Practitioners, yeah. Practitioners Union. Yes. Yes. Tell us about this kid in wonderful, town. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm. I must say for record that uh, public health officers in this, and technicians mm -hmm. in this country are celebrating the birth of this great union. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the mandate of this union is to be the unrivaled voice mm -hmm. in the prevention. And we're talking about prevention, mm -hmm. promoting, mm -hmm. and protecting the lives of people. Yeah. So uh, this union has been formed. And by the way, I didn't tell you our mandate. Our mandate, we also enforce the law. Mm -hmm. uh, enforcement comes from CAP 242, that's the Public Health Act CAP 242, mm -hmm. the Food, Drugs, and Chemical Substances Act CAP 254. Mm -hmm and other the tobacco control act and other acts mm -hmm. so this uh, the, 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 this union has been formed mm -hmm. to spearhead and advocate for the welfare mm -hmm. of these great men and women mm -hmm. who have been serving in this country and flattening diseases yeah we want to reach a point whereby we need to be speaking prevention and uh, very soon we are going to organize a very serious launch mm -hmm. and a massive member recruitment drive mm -hmm. that is going to kick off in, in uh, less than two weeks from now, yeah. so that we bring people, we tell the government that, look here, we have the solutions to the health needs of this country, mm -hmm. because we are going the prevention way, the yeah. primary health care way, mm -hmm. that's our way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the foot soldiers who are the PHOs mm -hmm. in this country, we are supposed to make sure that we have all these things addressed. And last but not least, uh, we have had PHOs at the points of entry mm -hmm. and other places who have not who have been retiring. Mm -hmm. They have been either through natural attrition, they have died, mm -hmm. they have retired, mm -hmm. they have done, and the government has not replaced these people. Mm -hmm. And no wonder you read if you walk if you walk to J, if you walk to JK right now, mm -hmm. or you go to Wilson, you go to at uh, Mombasa or Malaba border, mm -hmm. you realize that we have a deficit of PHOs in this country. And therefore, we're also putting the government on that we need to employ mm -hmm. and invest more in employing and replacing these public health officers and technicians mm -hmm. so that some of these issues we're talking about, public health interventions, can be realized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm understanding that it's a new uh, body that has to inform. For all these years in Kenya, there hasn't been 
One. We, have, we have never had a union for public health officers and technicians. Mm -hmm. And no wonder we have been seeing issues coming up. And I think the chairman was very clear and mm -hmm. categorical. We have been dying of cholera and uh, malaria mm -hmm. and TB and mm -hmm. all those. Name all those preventable diseases. Simply because we didn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. We need to have a platform that can be able to articulate for these people. Mm -hmm. Now that we have it at the moment, mm -hmm. we are pleased to say that we are going to make sure that this thing is brought to book. So we have never had a union before. Mm. This is the time. This is the first time as a country mm. we are having a union for PHOs and PhDs in this country. All yes. right. Yeah. Thank you. So, what position do you hold in the in the, un, in the union? Uh, that is a very hard question. But uh, <laughs> I'm a promoter number one. <laughs> 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 uh, I promote. I promote. We began this union in 2020. Yes. So I promote this union. And I'm also the interim sector general uh -huh, uh -huh. and the CEO of this union for this time. All right. So uh, once everything in the systems, we're in the process setting of the systems and structures, mm -hmm. while they are in place, mm -hmm. we're going to move there now and hold elections mm -hmm. so that we can have these things done and dusted. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I can add, he has spoken very well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to say that we want to advocate for public health investments. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You remember the mercury... I don't know whether you took tea today, Dr. <laughs> Did it have yeah. mercury? <laughs> Did you know? Or you took by faith? By faith. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know yeah. who can protect them from mercury. Mm -hmm. And mercury is just one heavy metal. Mm -hmm. We talk about pollution and many others. So mm -hmm. you want the government to invest in public health mm -hmm. officers mm -hmm. and give them the tools of trade. Mm -hmm. We need to sample waste water mm -hmm. and know what E. coli is there killing our ch kids yeah. in Mukumu mm -hmm. High School, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. We don't have the tools. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough PHOs in this country. Mm -hmm. We need to benchmark with the WHO threshold. Mm -hmm. You know that there's also a threshold for doctor to population. Yes, yes. We have one for nurses mm -hmm. to population, similarly for public health. We need to align to those standards yes. and give them the tools of trade. Mm -hmm. How can they measure air pollution and noise pollution? It is so expensive to get air quality reports. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be to go to people who are certified by NEMA. We want to decentralize those things, and mm -hmm. it's only a union that can help us do this. Yeah. We want a PHO everywhere. We want a community health worker to be paid well, because they are the ones doing the actual job yeah. in the households where decisions are made. Yeah. That's why we are here. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, uh, I understand you are the current chair of yeah. the union. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Yeah, I really appreciate it. We have to come to the end of the show yeah. mm -hmm. because of time. Yeah. I can see there is a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. yes. I think this is, not going, this is not going to be our last time. Yeah. Maybe another time we will have uh, such a sitting I and we can talk <laughs> even more about yeah. the progress. Okay, I did drive you over and talked about medicalization. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we have actually uh, married some of you. <laughs> but, uh, we <laughs> we want an equal uh, share yeah. of responsibility uh -huh. and resources yeah. because we are a health system. We need to work together. Work together, mm -hmm. definitely, and not in silos. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And definitely. maybe a parting shot mm -hmm. to the members of the public. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, prevention is more uh, cheaper and uh, better than cure. Yes. And I want to say that uh, the air we breathe in, mm -hmm. uh, the food we eat. The environment we live in always, de always determine how we live. Mm. So we we'll need to tell our people, uh, public health is there for you, mm. and uh, we need to work. This is actually a union for Wanjiku. <laughs> when the chairman is talking about mercury and lead and all those things, yeah. the heavy metals, mm. we are here to tell the, And the reason is show what happened with the sugar that, uh, that was happening the other day. We had a million, some around 50,000 bags of sugar disappearing, yeah. mm. uh, which were condemned, by the way those things were condemned so we are here to tell the 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 the, 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 the people the, the truth people yeah so that we're able to salvage them from all those things mm -hmm. so let's take care of ourselves guys and phos we love you and we are here with you thank you thank uh, you so much thank you, thank you brown thank, thank you, you ken for your time for your experience for mm -hmm. your knowledge yeah. and for your passion thank you. and we hope that uh, the the new kid in town <laughs> the union <laughs> for the, for public health officers and mm. technicians mm. is going to do a great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. So we've come to the end of this show. Thank you so much. I hope you've learned a, a thing, uh, 